to the Movie Throne. I'm your host, the one and only King Kansas, here to bring you another new movie review. What am I going to be covering? Memoirs of a Geisha, this lovely film, this gem I call it, Hidden Treasure. If you guys haven't seen this, this came back, well, it came out December 2005. It was directed by, let me find out the information here, because directed by Rob Marshall. Uh, it's about two hours and twenty long. It came out from Sony Pictures slash uh, DreamWorks. If you don't know what DreamWorks is, Steven Spielberg's company. He had his hand in producing this, so he did have his little input on this. Uh, some of the actors, guys, like you always know, I'm gonna do a non-spoiler a little bit, which will probably last a couple of minutes, because in order for me to review or recommend this film, you have to really get into spoilers. But I'll sell it or give you an idea why you should watch it in the shortest little time. But if you don't, if you've already seen it, and you want to see what the hell I felt about the movie, you'll can tune in later if you don't. I'll put that spoiler alert on the top. Okay. Actress, I apologize if I butcher these names, guys, in advance. I can't even speak Greek properly or mention Greek names. If it's English, I have no problem with that, but just bear with me. Okay. Zi Yi Zhang, she plays Sir Yuri. That's the main actress of the film. Ken Watanabe, he plays the chairman. Very key important person in this whole film. Michelle Yeoh, another person. Mamie, uh, Suzuka Oigo, Chiyo. She plays the older sister when she was a kid. I had to mention it because she did a good job. Even though you don't see her too much. Uh, Togoyo Igawa, he plays Tanaka. Meiko Sakamoto, her dad. I don't know exactly what part I seen him in. He was in the beginning a little bit, I think. This bit. Samantha Ferdinand plays Satsu, which I can't remember who that is. Elizabeth Sung, Sakamoto's wife. Thomas Ikita, Mr. Beku. This is a key. Well, this actress did an amazing job because you wanted to punch her daylights out, but she did such a good job coming across as the bitch of the film, I call it. Lee Young, Hatsumomu, or Momu, I hope I pronounced that right. She's the geisha that she first meets in the film and treats her kind of like you know kind of like street rat kind of thing but anyways there's also uh chai chin auntie which is hilarious in this one she kind of you know felt sorry for her kaori momi the mother which you don't see her too much i think she's pretty much dies off screen you don't see her at all to tell you the truth ken xan plays the general who kind of like had to think for her which trust me he was okay but he was still a creep uh yakuda kudu uh, she plays Pumpkin. That's her like older sister that kind of befriends her when she first gets there. Uh, Kerry Hiyoku Tagawa, the Baron. I like to call him the scumbag of the film, and you'll exactly know when I get into spoilers. Well, that's the actors in it, guys. I highly recommend this movie. It's good from beginning to end. If you like Japanese culture, the whole kimono... Uh, geisha kind of relationship and what the traditions were back in the day all the way there you know this film kind of i think believe takes place a little bit during or before one of the wars that goes down i'm not going to tell you exactly which one because i don't 1960s happens around uh but that's when the americans come in and ship breaks so it's a little bit later but it's not too much or a part of the film it's a little part of the integral thing near the end of the movie but it doesn't have no bearing on it um basically guys it's about a young girl her and her sister basically there's not spoilers it's in the trailer uh, get uprooted from their father father ends up selling him to some lady in some town to become a geisha and doesn't take both sisters and they kind of get split up and that kind of uh, I guess structures or kind of guides her in her way of life and then something happens later on that she meets this gentleman played by Ken Watanabe that kind of influences her life and for her to kind of like see the end game in the way like what she has to do in order to kind of be happy later on in life because this whole movie you feel bad there's a lot of uh, heartfelt moments uh, beatings feeling sorry for her the other actors even the bitch actor like I call her you can kind of see how she was treated and how she would use it. and then of course the new person comes in she's the golden child and she kind of gets she feels like she's getting pushed aside that this is the new star in, the, in a sense just the culture, guys, the way the men were treating women and, you know, that you can still find kindness and how one person can actually change your life. Uh, I'm not, it's positive times, negative times. It's kind of sad how people thought back then or how different cultures believe how they should treat their women, I guess, in a sense. But amazing, very invested if you're into Japanese culture and 
geisha and all that uh, lore, you would love it. Good writing. Actors did a phenomenal job from beginning to end. Very beautiful scenes. It was shot very well. If you wanted to see scenes of uh, Small Town in Japan, you got it. From the dancing of the geishas and the performances, holy shit, like top-notch stuff. I highly recommend it. It's 2 hours and 20 minutes. You're like, it's probably one of uh, Ken Watanabe's best movies. Like, I recommend This is probably the best movie I've seen in the last 20 years, if I want to say it. You can add it to that list. It got nominated, I think, for six Oscar awards. I don't know if it won anything for anything, but I'm pretty sure it did because... Very colorful, very vibrant. I highly recommend it. So yes, get your butts, grab it like I did. I had it on DVD, and I had that's the first thing. Once I seen it for a good price under ten bucks, I had to pick it up and add it to my Blu-ray collection. So there you go. I highly recommend it. So now let's get into spoilers. Put the spoiler logo on the screen. Holy shit! Where do I start? The beginning scene. Oh my god! The heart wrench. Basically, her and her sister get sold off because I guess the father had to pay off some debt and that was the only way that he can make money to pay for maybe taking care of his wife their mother ends up passing away and then he passes away six months she finds out later in the film so they get taken to a city just like that out of the blue uprooted that's the word and they get there and the, the lady who's in charge I don't know the queen bitch whatever you want to call her of the place who trains them to be a geisha uh, sees the two of them and she sees how one one has like uh, what she calls water in the eyes or something her eyes were blue like they were pretty I'll tell you right now like she really stood out that little girl who played her phenomenal job as she did an amazing job um, and basically this one of the sisters gets tossed to go live a different kind of lifestyle like a, kind of like a prostitute I want to call it in a sense and she came the geisha you know because geisha I learned through this film is that uh, geisha is like an art form it's performance it's to give the appearance or the look that you want to be desired or like people want you but they can never have you so it's more like for looks and a you can't touch kind of thing kind of like a tease that's the word right in the best possible way which i do not disagree with that's whatever it is what it is but oh the costumes the actors in it ken watan be amazing uh, stuff that she went down, like her getting beat up, meeting that with that bitch the first thing, and she kind of felt threatened that who's this new chick kid who's gonna take my place? You can kind of, she kind of felt it think as the way she looked, the kid. You know she was gonna turn up and grow up to be a beautiful woman in competition in her eyes, right? And that she'll get tossed to the side, but whatever. You need a bitch in the film, and that's what she was. But you kind of felt for her too. You know, I call her a bitch, but she that's how she portrayed herself towards the actress. You know. She's just like mean spirited. That's the word. I'll stop using the B word. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. Uh, like I said, ages 13 and up, not for kids. <laughs> Anyways, um, amazing. Something happens. She ends up going. She tries to look for her sister, and then she falls down or whatever. She meets Ken Watanabe's character, and he kind of. It's the first time she ever was. Someone was nice to her, and she actually had some sort of ice cream, and that she kind of remembered carry that throughout she got money from her and instead of giving money to whoever the hell was looking after her she kind of like uh gave it to uh she made it basically a wish in some temple and later on yeah so that kind of like helped her guy to kind of like find her person she's supposed to be with or her like purpose in life down the road that kind of shaped the direction that she had to take and go her sister and then her sister ends up disappearing on her because she escaped and she had escaped and now she'll end up dead and I don't blame because of the lifestyle that they kind of tossed her into which was kind of pretty sad uh, amazing period piece uh, things going down from war being introduced and how the geisha history and culture kind of like disappeared and something else and then you have the Americans show up and a whole bunch of everything going on but done well I, it really was and then you know being offered and certain bad things happening to her and the lack of respect and that scumbag uh, I want to call him the general I can't stand him Ooh, you know like you knew he was trouble and she, you know like I said and uh, Michelle Yeoh plays the mentor who takes her on because she did a lot of bad stuff and instead of her being a geisha she was like basically a slave to the lady who she first was taken to, taken to and she ends up going with Michelle Yeoh's character and she kind of mends her into it and she becomes this badass geisha like wow like the performances in it amazing that dance that she did solo on the stage for people to kind of like basically bet so they can kind of like uh she can lose her virginity too i think that's what the whole deal was but uh yeah and it's it, it was just 
good from beginning to end. Like, I forgot, like, half of the movie, but once I got into it, like, the flow of it was fine. You didn't feel like, oh, my God, I'm stuck here for two hours and 20 minutes. No, it just went up. And then near the end, like, you know, things started to unravel for her. It was going down, and she was becoming miserable. And then she's like, well, you know what? I'll make what I can with it. I screwed up my chances with uh, Ken Watanabe's character, the chairman. I'll... Uh, go and meet this guy who loved her or apparently who do everything and kind of saved her life during the whole war situation because you know when war goes on people are casually at war they get into the, the slave trade sex slave trade and all that crap and she kind of got spared and got tossed to the mountains where she was looked after but it was kind of like the chairman had a little bit of to do that and then they end up meeting at the end and uh, she had her happy ending and it doesn't it kind of eludes what will go on because he made money and they live happily ever after. I don't know if there was ever a sequel, which there's not going to be. doesn't need to be. Leave it as it is. But it's probably one of my favorite films that I've seen in the last 20 years. Amazing actors, actresses, well-written. Uh, like, cinematography was amazing. The Whatever happened in that film, there was a purpose for it. Let's just say that. There was not, they just need to throw, let's do this scene just because we wanted to add something and kind of shock people. It was meaningful, and it contributed to the story moving forward. There's not one boring part of this film. I highly recommend it. I don't know. You guys let me know. Did you guys see Memoirs, Memoirs of a Geisha like I did? Or haven't? Like, I haven't seen in 15 years. You know, if you had watch it like I did, come back in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are on this film. Do you recommend it? I definitely recommend This is probably, a, if I can give gold stars away, the king will give gold stars for this film. You have to go see this. If you haven't watched it, pick up the damn thing. If it's under 10 bucks, like I found mine, copy for Blu-ray, pick it up. You will not regret it. And like I always say, like, share, subscribe to the Movie Throne. Check out for some more movie reviews for the rest of this week. You'll see the little notifications. And podcast is coming in April. So stay tuned. Uh, you better buckle up for that one because it's going to be amazing. You guys are going to love it. Trust me. In due time. And most importantly, stay off the King's Throne. Go watch a couple of movies yourself. Tune into this channel. And make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time, be the hell good. Evil.